Welcome to the 21st chapter of the book of 2 Kings. Manasseh, uh, son of Hezekiah. Wicked reign in Judah, as far as in this chapter. But in 2 Chronicles, we'll see another story towards the end of his life, which is very interesting. But his father, Hezekiah, was a good king, one of the, the best. But then his son uh, becomes one of the most wicked. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, the Greeks have a saying about something like this. Uh, Greek Orthodox priests, can, if they marry before they are, are ordained, then they can stay married and have children, which many of them do. And the people have a saying, uh, priests, kid, devils grandkid. So it kind of goes along here with the um, wickedness of Hezekiah's son. We, many of us have had that problem, not that walking with the Lord, but their children don't. And sometimes uh, if you're in the clergy, it's uh, very hard to deal with because uh, you're saying one thing and your family's uh, doing the opposite. You'd, a lot of times you don't have control over your children. Now, I know in the New Testament, Paul says a man's not to be a deacon or a uh, overseer unless he has control of his family. But when they get older, it's pretty difficult. But then in those days, maybe it wasn't. Maybe uh, the children obeyed better than they do today. But Manasseh is only... 12 years old in his taking reign. In 50 and 5 years, he reigned in Jerusalem. So for 55, 70, 70 years when he passed away. That's a, he's the longest of all, the longest reign of all the kings of Judah. I'm not sure about Israel. The name of his mother was Hepzibah. And I've seen where some names of women in the 1800s were Hepzibah. They used that name or back in the colonial days, maybe I'm even thinking. It seems like in the Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, somebody was named something close to that. But he did the wicked thing in the eyes of the Lord of Kyrios and went according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord uh, removed from in front of the sons of Israel. Now, kurios is the usage in the Greek. There is no such thing as Yahweh or Jehovah, like a name. It was a title in the Greek, and I continue using it because it carries over to the New Testament. The kurios Jesus Christos, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a very important thing to understand. Now, as far as Manasseh and his reign in the uh, annals of Assyria that they have found of uh, both the king Esarhaddon and Asurbanipal both uh, mention Manasseh as being a vassal slave to him. And so this Manasseh went according to the abominations whom the Lord removed in front of the sons of Israel. Uh, bet between him and uh, history of Judah being developed from David. And he returned and built the high places which Hezekiah, his, his patir, tore down. Paternal comes from that word. And he reestablished an altar to Baal and made the sacred groves, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and he did obeisance to all the military of the heaven. That would be the stars. And he served to them. And that's like astrology. And he built an altar in the house of the Lord, in which he said, that is God, in Jerusalem I will establish my name. His father took out the altar of his father uh, Ahaz, but now Manasseh has developed another 
uh, another um, altar. The serving the military of the heaven astrology. Uh, we see down here when we get to chapter six, and he built altars to all the military of the heaven in the two courtyards of the house of the Lord, and he led his sons through fire uh, to Moloch, Moloch, out in the valley of the sons of Hinnom in the southern uh, wall of Jerusalem. And he prognosticated. And prognosticating is to predict uh, according to present indications, something that you see, like political, you can say, oh, well, this, you know, things are going to happen bad because of so-and-so doing has now been elected and things like that lightweight foretelling. And then uh, foretelling is foretelling future events, either in a national scene or an individual with a person that does that like a psychic. And he appointed ones who deliver oracles. And oracles were places. We had the Delphi Oracle in Greece, where they went to a certain place, and a, a priest of that oracle would uh, give people information when they came there to find out about what's going to happen. And diviners, and a diviner was uh, one who foretold by signs uh, or omens, and they cut open animals and looked at their livers and so forth uh, to de determine, I believe, Caesar. Uh, did that to determine whether he should, uh, how he should go to a war. And he multiplied to do the wicked thing in the eyes of the Lord to provoke him to uh, anger. And he put the carving of the sacred grove in the house in which the Lord said to David uh, and to his son, and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I chose from out of the tribes of Israel, that I will put my name there into the eon. It was a sort of a repeat of an earlier um, place. And I will not proceed to shake the foot of Israel from the land which I gave to their fathers. Only if they should guard to do according to all uh, which I gave charge to them. So there is an if. According to every law which uh, Moses, my bondman, gave charge to them, and that would be the law of Moses on Sinai. He would be with them as long as they did that, but they weren't. And they hearkened not. And Manasseh misled them to do the wicked thing in the eyes of the Lord above the nations, which the Lord removed in front of the sons of Israel. And the Lord spoke by the hand of his servants, the prophets, saying, now he may be talking about Micah, which we mentioned in the last chapter, and it could be other prophets also. On account of as much as Manasseh, king of Judah, did these wicked abominations, according to all as much as the Amorite did before him. And even indeed, he led Israel, uh, Judah into sin by his idol. So he was an idolater. Is it not so? Thus says the Lord God of uh, Israel. Behold, I bring evils upon Jerusalem and Judah, so that all hearing it shall sound in both of his ears. And I will stretch out over Jerusalem the measure of Samaria and the weight of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a writing tablet and overturns it upon his face. Sounds like what Micah wrote. And I will wipe away the vestige. What a condemnation of these people. They're chosen by God, and he's going to wipe away the vestige of my inheritance. And I will deliver them into the hands of their enemies. And they will be for ravaging and for plunder, taking everything uh, by all their enemies, because of all as much as they did the wicked thing in my eyes, and were provoking me to anger from the day which I led their fathers from out of Egypt. They've been provoking him all this time. And I look at today as the country of Israel after crucifying Jesus 2,000 years ago. Is it still uh, provoking the Lord to anger? And indeed, 
Manasseh poured out exceedingly much blood, killed people in, of Jerusalem until of which he filled Jerusalem of it, a mouth to mouth, uh, door to door, gate to gate. Outside of his sins, which he led Judah into sin, to do the wicked thing in the eyes of the Lord. Not only him, but he uh, caused the people uh, to do these things. And the rest of the words of Manasseh, and all as much as he did, in his sin which he sinned, behold, are these not written upon the scroll, the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they entombed him in the garden of his house, in the garden of Uzzah, and Ammon, his son, reigned instead of him. The condemnation of, uh, as mentioned in Jer Jeremiah, the condemnation of uh, Manasseh, it says, and I will deliver them up for the distresses to all the nation, uh, to all the kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for all which he did in Jerusalem. But now we also have this um, place in Second Chronicles 33.11, which gives us a different story, which is interesting. It says, And the Lord led upon them the rulers of the force of the king of Assyria, and they overtook uh, Manasseh. So apparently, which it doesn't mention in Second Kings, but it does in Chronicles, that uh, Assyria came back and they took him in bonds and tied him in shackles, and led him into Babylon. That's amazing that it wasn't mentioned in Second Chronicles. But he must have not have stayed there, because he was buried in Jerusalem. And as he was afflicted, he sought the face of uh, Kiriu, his God, and was humbled exceedingly from in front of the God of his fathers. And he prayed to him, and he, God, heeded him. And God heeded his yelling and returned him unto Jerusalem over his kingdom. And Manasseh knew that the Lord, he is God. Oh, that we would recognize if it takes a dra dramatic thing like being taken captive to Babylon or being taken captive. I was taken captive for 13 years and walked away from God. But then I realized that he is God, that Jesus was the Word. The Word became flesh, and He is God. And I changed my life. It sounds like something that happened to Manasseh. And after these things, he built a wall outside the city of David from the southwest of Gihon by the rushing stream going forth by the fishing gate, a circuit to o the Ophel, and raised it high exceedingly. And he placed rulers of the force in all the walled cities in Judah. And he removed the gods of the aliens and the carved image from out of the house of the Lord and all the altars which he built on the mountain of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem. And he cast them outside of the city. And he set up an, the altar of the Lord and sacrificed upon it a deliver, sacrifice of deliverance offering and a praise offering and told Judah to serve to the Lord God of Israel. Uh, only still the people sacrificed upon the high places, except to the Lord their God. And the rest of the words of Manasseh and his prayer to God and the words of the seers, speaking to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, behold, they are written upon the words of the kings of Israel. And his prayer, and it goes on. Uh, so, there's this extra um, place that's amazing that how much more there is to the story outside of what we see just in uh, the book of Second Kings, which we're back into now. Next king is Ammon, his son. Ammon was a son being 20 and 2 years old. And in his taking reign, in his taking reign. And two years he reigned in Jerusalem, a very short time. And history says that during this period of time it was starting to be the disintegration of the Assyrian Empire, probably 
of one reason why uh, uh, his father Manasseh was taken back to Jerusalem from Babylon. And the name of his mother was Meshulameth, daughter of Haruz from out of Jotba. And he did the wicked thing in the eyes of the Lord, as Manasseh his father did. Now, I don't think Second Chronicles adds anything more to the story outside of uh, this. And he went in every way in which his father went. And he slaved to the idols whom his father slaved. Uh, and he did obeisance on the ground of his father uh, to them. And he abandoned the Lord God of his fathers and went not in the way of the Lord. So apparently when Manasseh came back, did all these things, and his son turned them around again to the against Kyrio, Kyrios. And the servants of Ammon confederated against him, and they killed the king in his house. And the people of the land struck the ones confederating against King Ammon. Now Ammon and Manasseh are both mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus and Matthew, I guess it is. And the people of the land gave to Josiah his son instead of him. And the rest of the words of Ammon, as much as he did, behold, are not these written upon the scroll of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And they entombed him in his tomb in the garden of Uzzah, the same place where his father Manasseh was buried. and Josiah, his son, reigned instead of him. Now we go back to a good king, Josiah. But to find out about this very interesting king, uh, you have to join us in our next video seminar in chapter 22, and I'm sure you will. And until then, God bless.